There's only one way to become successful as a man and as a person. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you just that, that the only way to be successful is to be four dimensional, which is not going to be what you think it is. That's for sure. Welcome back to God's business, where I interview the top Christian influencers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders on how you can create not just a good business, but God's business where he is the multiplier of your success. I'm doing a solo episode today and let me know down in the comments below uh, or just through feedback on Instagram. Is this something you want me to do more of? I'm going to break down today the only way that you can become successful. A few things of how we created something that we call the four-dimensional businessman that is what our company is really all about over at the King's Brotherhood. It's very interesting because when I was thinking of this episode specifically, it's like, all right, what are the core things? Because I could share on this for hours and hours and hours. And what's the core things I should talk about here? And really the first thing was around like, how did we even create the four-dimensional businessman? And for me, it really came out of mostly failures. When I talk about four-dimensional, four-dimensional, not just in what four-dimensional is the word means, which I'll talk about a little bit later in the episode, what's the difference between three-dimensional and four-dimensional? How different is that? And also, what are the people out there right now that are living a three-dimensional lifestyle, maybe even two-dimensional? Plenty of examples out there of people living one-dimensional lifestyles, and we'll break down the differences of all that in real time. Yeah, a four-dimensional person is truly having faith at the top. I'll explain why that's at the top at the very beginning. Your relationship with God, your spiritual growth. The second thing, having your health as number two. That's mental, physical, spiritual, emotional health. Relationships number three. The closest relationship that you have in the natural is a spouse relationship, then family relationship with your kids, and then extended family, etc. breaking down all the way to network and the people that you surround yourself with. And then after that is the, the vision and impact that you're looking to create in the world, which for us as people listening to this episode is business inside of your business. What is your vision? What is your calling? What are you meant to do on this earth? And you're the only one that can walk that out or else it would be someone else's calling. Yet how did I, how do we actually come up with this and why is that the only way to success? When I look back for me, I grew up in a household that was not Christian whatsoever. So for me, I was already failing in the number one area, which was inside of my faith, right? I was looking for anything out there just in the normal environment to fill myself. And for me, growing up in a household where my parents broke up when I was four, I wrote my first suicide letter when I was seven. We, My family and I never really even talked about that. Uh, starting having like more stressors in the home between my father and I, and do I go live with my mom? And like really having nothing else to like lean back on. And it's not their fault, right? Like they had no relationship with God either. So they couldn't instill that inside of me. And so that was the core dimension that I was really failing. And also throughout that time when my dad and I had a falling out, I recognized really quickly what it was like to fail in the health dimension. I became 60 pounds overweight. Uh, in the success dimension, I graduated with 1.8 GPA. And even after I had found Jesus, transformed my spiritual life, lost 60 pounds, got married, grew in my relationship, I still couldn't provide for my wife. And so through each and every one of these areas, I had failed as a provider in the mission and vision that I had. I had the vision like Joseph did. You look at Joseph, I'm going to rule over my brothers and then got thrown into slavery. That is not how it was supposed to go, probably in his mind. For me, I'm going to crush it. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to I'm going to carry out the will of God in from my life on the earth. And then all of a sudden I'm failing as a husband, downgrading the homes that we live in, meaning from townhome to apartment complex, 400 square foot, terrible environment, no AC, 100 plus degrees. That is not exactly how I thought this was going to go. So part of this was created through my own failure. I'd walk through failure in every one of these areas without Jesus for the first 18 years of my life getting in the d demonic the year before I found Jesus, which I could do an entire episode on where I was literally searching after the supernatural because I didn't know that Christians did anything besides not drink at parties. It's like, oh, they just don't drink and they don't really party that much. That doesn't really sound that cool, but there's nothing else really different about them. So I was searching for the supernatural before I found Jesus, which helped me find Jesus. It also helped me go all in on what his promises were. And when I found that, it was like, Okay, now I have this. I have I have vision for my life. I've I've been set free. Uh, I lost the sixty pounds. I gained sixty pounds. 
really felt the self-consciousness of that, saw how that it was really keeping me from putting myself out there. It really would have kept me from even meeting the people that then introduced me to Jesus because I was so self-conscious all the time. And I saw that as I, as I was able to release the weight and invest in my health, I gained confidence. But what I gained more than that was that the shift of the focus went from conscious of self only, self-consciousness, to being able to focus on others. Because I no longer was just sitting there focused on myself. How do I look? What do people think? I'm overweight. I also was like, felt like I wasn't representing myself. Like everyone was seeing a example of me that was not me. So leaving that, I was like, oh, great. Like I'm experiencing these little things. And maybe you've experienced these things as well, where you have this temporary breakthrough or breakthrough in one of the dimensions. And you get this temporary fulfillment of like, wow, this is what it's like to have something under wraps. And it was, and it was there. I went to ministry school and then I got out and I got married. And then we went back to ministry school together. It was like, oh my goodness, I'm married. I'm not overweight anymore. I've got Jesus. I'm spiritually growing. And then all of a sudden I had this new dimension of, I don't know how to provide for my wife. I don't know how to carry out my mission on the earth. All these new pressures that came on. And that's really when I started going into the juggle phase. And so juggle phase is when you all, you start experiencing fruitfulness in these dimensions and, and the responsibilities of them as you grow up. You're going, okay, when you really look at things, you got faith, health, relationships, and for us, business. That's our calling, right? You could say calling there, stewardship, et cetera. And inside of that, you you experience that, okay, these are things that are that are necessary. But the juggling phase is when you go through what I went through, which was, okay, I got married and then I go, okay, I need to go after my vision. I stopped taking care of my health again. So I stopped taking care of my health. And at some point that starts catching up with you. And it felt like I was like either juggling balls or spinning plates or probably a better analogy for the people that are our parents out there is it's kind of like if you're picking up your kid's toys off the ground, but you never like drop them off. So the more that you pick up, the more that you're juggling and holding and as you have more and more of those toys, then as you continue to walk, you just drop them. And so you pick up another one and you drop one. You pick up another one and you drop one. And you just don't have the capacity anymore to keep that up. And that's what started happening to me is I would I would go pursue business and I would see my faith and my spiritual life start to dwindle. That I'd kind of just ride on the coattails of that. Because you can ride on the coattails of it just like you can in fitness. You get really fit. You're not going to notice if you take a week off. But a month off three months off, six months off. Now you don't even recognize who you used to be. You've now gotten out of all of that momentum. And now it's really, really difficult to start that momentum. There's a quote out there that says, the hardest thing is getting something into momentum, but keeping something in motion is not very difficult. And so what I started noticing is that for me is I would become healthy. I got married in my relationship. I had no ability to provide. I started going out there trying to figure out business, trying to grow there. I stopped growing as much spiritually. I stopped growing as much inside of my health because I was so focused on business. And ultimately, it even led me to a place where I had lost vision for the business. I was so caught up in things that were outside of those dimensions. Now, recognize like those are the four dimensions, but there's so many other things. You got app games on your phone. You got video games. You got movies. You got drugs. You got addictions. You have all these other things that can really try to take precedent and take priority over those four things. And it got to the point where my wife's like, this is not the man that I married. If he does not come back into alignment with who he is and his purpose, I don't know what our relationship is going to look like. And so then it came down to more of the audit phase for myself, just going like, okay, what are the core things that are necessary to grow as a man? And this is just the way that my mind works. I want to know this is a business too. Like what is the bare minimum? So per, to produce money, inside of a business, which money is the oxygen of a business. To produce money, here's what's required. Let's say that if you just had the fifth portion, which is retention, resell, upsell, no matter how good you are at reselling people, if you've never sold anyone before, you can't resell them. No matter how great your product and fulfillment is, if nobody sells someone into it so that they can consume it or go through it, then it doesn't matter. And so let's keep going backwards. No matter how good your sales process is, if you have no leads, it doesn't matter. No matter how good it is, once you have someone in your ecosystem of your business, if your follow-up is trash, doesn't matter. Like you're going to lose sales. 
But no matter how good your follow-up is, if you have no leads in the pipeline, your follow-up doesn't matter. So there is a sequence of events in order that have importance and also juggle, need different attention through different times. That's lead generation, lead nurture and follow-up, conversion or sales process, deliverable, and then ascension or retention, resell, and upsell. Those are required to get the most out of your business that if you don't have any resale, retention, upsell focus, well, then you're missing out on all the back end revenue. If you have terrible fulfillment, then you're never going to get reorders. You're going to get refunds. You're going to get bad reviews, which will then give you no referrals. If you have no sales process, no good. And then obviously we go back to the front end. If you just have no lead generation, then everything else is going to dry up, even if you are the very best inside of the world. So I know this to be true inside of a business. And I started thinking, okay, I'm sick and tired of juggling, feeling like I'm always chasing my tail as a man. What is required of me of a, as a man? What are the things that I physically can't outsource, can't get rid of, have to get good at? What I started recognizing is one of the first online businesses that I created was in the health and fitness realm because I had lost 60 pounds. And I didn't know about the different styles of attractive characters. I didn't know I could bring in experts like I mostly do in, in, even inside of the show is I bring in people to speak because I'd rather highlight them. I was just asking myself, what have I done that I can teach? Because I'm not going to be one of those guys that talks about things that I hadn't done. I go, well, what have I done with my life? Well, I have lost 60 pounds and kept it off. So I thought, okay, this is a great place to start. I'll help other men that are 20 to 60 pounds overweight. I'll help them lose weight, get a six pack, get in shape. Because I've done that. I know the path to do that. And that was the first area that I was going to focus on. And so for me, I, I was looking at all of these different men I was going through and, and working with them one-on-one. -on -one, and that was the first style company that I had. And I remember going through about 600 different style conversations, one-on-ones, conversations and really seeing men that were struggling with the same exact areas as I did. And I go, what are the areas that we can't outsource? Like no matter what we have to get good at. And it got pretty vulgar really quick. Cause I was just like, uh, what are the areas that we can't outsource? Obviously our faith in Christ, our relationship with him, we cannot, but at the beginning it was a three-dimensional businessman. And there's many people out there living this three-dimensional businessman lifestyle. Cause at first I wasn't teaching specifically Christians. So I was like, all right, these in the natural realm is health, relationships, and business. And I just wrapped up faith in the spiritual aspect of health. And I didn't give it its own precedent over it until later on. And I started recognizing, I'm like, all right, what are the core areas that we can't outsource? Health, why? Well, because at the end of the day, this is a place that no one else can take responsibility in your life for. Like nobody else can take this over. You can get a meal plan, you get a workout plan, you get breath work guide, you get how much water you're supposed to drink. You can get what workouts and exercises you're supposed to do. Even to this day, I didn't figure out how much food I should eat. I ran a health company. I still didn't do it for myself. I don't program my own workouts. But at the end of the day, no one's going to make sure that I push myself in the gym. No one's going to make me show up. No one's going to be able to move my legs for me. No one's going to make sure that I don't stuff Reese's down my throat in the middle of the night stuff the wrappers in because I'm too lazy to throw them away, that every time you change your sheets, all the wrappers go flying out. No one's going to be that person, the, the drawer right next to your bed. No one can stop you from doing that. And what I saw is that as I started working with these men in this area of health, they would always come up to me. They'd be all wealthy because I only worked with business people even at that time. And they'd come up to me and they'd be like, Nicholas, like, dude, I need your help, man. Like, I need, I need your program. I need to figure out how you do it. Like, uh, I need to figure out how I can eat healthy and how I can exercise. And they would always tell me kind of the same things. And I would always look at them and be like, bro, you don't even understand. Like, this is not, not it. Like, this is your job. This is your responsibility. Like we could take your blood work. We can build you a customized meal plan. We could build you a custom workout plan based on your lifestyle and based on your goals so that you know how to get there, but you don't know what you want, why you want it. And you've not taken responsibility for this area of your life. You don't understand why there's even an importance on it. So because of that, you still think health is for you over there, the health guy, but it's not for me because I'm just a business guy. So come on. Yeah, oh, man, I don't, I don't understand this discipline stuff. And I started recognizing that's one area that we can't outsource. What about your relationship with your wife and your kids? Can you outsource that? Can someone else build that relationship for you? I used to say, <laughs> nobody can have sex with your wife for you, so you should probably get good at it. Like no matter what you do, no one's going to do that for you. 
And I, I just say that just to rock the guy's world. Like, whoa, don't go there. Like, well, no, I'm going there because no one else can do it for you. So you should probably figure that out. And so that's not an area again where, oh man, I don't know how to do that. You know, my wife, blah, blah, blah. no, take responsibility for the area because no matter what, no matter how many coaches or consultants or scriptures that you read or, or programs that you go through, no one else can build your relationship for you. So it's time to take responsibility of the, over that area. Let's just talk about responsibility real quick. Is that I remember Jordan Peterson talking about this and he had talked about that if you want to decrease stress in your life and anxiety, Take, resp- more, uh, take on more responsibilities in life. People want to offload responsibility, but it's actually when you take responsibility that you decrease these areas. And it reminded me of this quote that it says, with great power comes great responsibility. Go ahead and just X that out. That's why it's only found in superhero movies, is that it's when you take great responsibility, that's where you gain great power. Go like, I'm taking responsibility for this area, not the burden, just responsibility. I understand that I'm called to take dominion over this, to take land and fortify it in this area. And then the next one was inside of the vision. But for many of the guys, they knew this, like they were fine focusing on the business stuff, but recognize that when we go faith, health, relationships, then business, they were focusing on the very bottom one, which is for men, if I make more money, everything will be better. If I just make more money, if I have more success, the problem is, is that one, that might be really, really far away, depending on how far out you push that goal. And then everything else doesn't matter to you unless you have success here. So you stop getting any satisfaction, excitement, because whatever in your brain you put value on, your brain doesn't know the difference between drinking a gallon of water and becoming a billionaire. So if you put so much emphasis on this many sales, this much growth in the business, these metrics, you stop putting value on growing in your faith, growing in your health, growing in your relationship, growing with your family, growing with your friends. Now all of a sudden you get no satisfaction out of that where you'll always ditch it for the thing that you have priority over. And this got me into these relationships with all these guys where I'd start asking them and I'd go into the audit phase. We went through the juggle phase. Now the audit phase, I would say, what are your top priorities in life? They would look at me and go, well, my business is a big priority. My health, because they'd be on the phone for health, right? So they'd be like, my health is a big priority to me. And Growth is a big priority. Those are the core things. I'd be like, are you married? Do you have kids? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just a given. I'm married. I have kids. Like, okay, great. Like, is faith a big deal to you? Oh, number one. Like, okay. Well, just so you know, until you prioritize it, it is not a priority. And by definition, priority is just when push comes to shove, what comes first? It's obvious that you're going to sleep more than you eat. It's obvious that you're going to sleep more than you probably talk to your wife every single day. They're probably not going to talk to your wife for eight hours. Does that mean you love sleep so much more than your wife? No. Just means that when push comes to shove, if your wife needs something, will you sacrifice sleep? Absolutely. And so what we started doing is we started auditing these guys' lives and going, okay, how do we first plug into your calendar? Let's strip the calendar. Let's plug in in faith where you're looking to grow. What are the results that you're looking to produce? Why are you looking to produce those results? What is our plan to produce those results? How can we chunk those down into daily action items that you can actually track and measure to see if you've grown? How do we audit that progress? What does growth look like? Okay, let's put it in the calendar. Okay, inside of your health, what does that look like? What is your goal? Why do you want it? What's the trackable metric? What's the daily action items? How do we know that we're moving the needle forward? Great, let's plug it into the calendar. So noticing again that we're actually physically plugging these things into the calendar because if they actually are priorities, they're not just givens. They're things that are actually scheduled and done. And I I talked about that we had made the shift from three-dimensional to four-dimensional. And I'm talking like the three-dimensional businessman had a huge purpose and it transformed the lives of hundreds of thousands of guys with the message, thousands of guys directly through the programs and the teachings, et cetera. I mean, these guys were building businesses, building brotherhood, building connections, transforming their bodies, losing tens of thousands of pounds collectively, getting married, having having great families. But when we transitioned to the four-dimensional businessman, I remember going, okay, God has to be the center of this, the covering, the multiplier of these guys' success, that there are things that God has called you to do that he won't do, but there's also things in your life that you cannot do that only God can do. And inside of this, when we started bringing God into it, I started looking at why is it a four-dimensional businessman? 
And the difference between three dimensional and four dimensional is literally so astronomical. You look at two dimensional and that's like a piece of paper with no dimension, right? There's no depth. There's no height. You go to three dimensional and now we can see me here and you could see the, the stuff behind me if you're watching on YouTube. Yet there's this depth to it, right? No matter where you're at, you can see in a three dimensional world. You can see color, you can see dimension, thickness, height desk in front of you, this microphone, you can see all around it, which in a two-dimensional world would sound absolutely insane. So I started going and going, what's a four-dimensional world? And a four-dimensional world is even more insane. Like you would be able to see the colors of people's emotions. You wouldn't even use words because there's no real point to use words because you can communicate without words, without talking. You can communicate in real time any anywhere across the world. If you're late to something, you could just simply show up on time by defying time. So now time wouldn't be an issue. You could travel back and forth in between time. You wouldn't use doors because they'd be inefficient. There's no reason to walk through a door because in a fourth dimensional world, you could just walk right through the wall. You could show up in a different area at any given time. So I started looking at this. I'm like, oh my gosh, like even though it's the difference is three dimensional to four dimensional, it's so astronomically different. And this is the big difference when you go from just taking care of the physical health, relationships, business, money, how to make money, how to manage money, how to grow money, what's your vision to entering into this fourth dimensional whole different realm that God oper operates out of time and space. His promises are yes and amen. And as you start operating out of that, it really ascends you to this next level from a three-dimensional businessman, which is honorable. You will be very successful in the world as a three-dimensional person, prospering in health, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional. Like, all right, I'm prospering in health. I'm fit. I'm healthy. I'm mentally healthy. I'm spiritually healthy. Uh, I'm emotionally healthy. I I've got a great relationship. I'm investing. I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do inside of my relationship, inside of my business. I'm making great money. I'm crushing it. I'm reaching lots of people. Yet there's really a multiplying effect that happens when you submit it to the feet of Jesus and say, hey, this is yours. I'm willing to pick up your yoke, your burden, because I know it's light. And I want you to have your hand on everything I do. Maybe an example of this would be like finances. Like you could be great at managing finances. You could do everything in your power to do it. Yet there are promises from God of multiplication when you trust him with your first fruits, with your tithes and offerings. And all of a sudden, they, there's quotes out there that say, you know, 100% of your money in your hands is nowhere near as powerful as 90% of your money in God's hands, right? It's like you look at the physical realm, and when I look at the physical, it's like a kid who has five loaves and two fish. There's 5,000 people that need to be fed. A kid contributes five loaves, two fish. That's the physical realm. As soon as God multiplies, puts his hand on it, that five loaves and two fish now fed 5,000 and had baskets of leftovers. So inside of your life, do you want the five loaves, two fish? Keep it to yourself. Here's the multiplication. It's whatever I have. Or do you want God's hand to be on it? And that's the difference when you submit yourself to him and become this four-dimensional businessman. So how do we become a four-dimensional businessman? We had talked about the inside of the faith realm, this is inside of growing your relationship with Jesus, submitting to him, putting, making him Lord of your life, and really growing in your knowledge and understanding and renewing of mind inside of that area. Inside of health, we have emotional, physical, mental growing of health. We have inside of our relationships, we have our relationship with our spouse, relationship with our kids, relationship with our family, people that are like family, friends, network, and the people that we have influence over and that we're pouring into. And inside of our business, we have our vision, our mission, our purpose, the things in front of us, the how do we steward money? How do we make it? How do we keep it, manage it? And then how do we grow it and multiply it as God's told us to do? Just like with the parable of the talents, the guy who didn't multiply his money was one, he was afraid. He was afraid to lose it, which many people are. But that guy was looked at as wicked and slothful for doing nothing. Whereas the people that multiplied their money were said, uh, here you go good and faithful servant. Here, you've been trusted with little. You're going to be put over a lot. We're going to take even the things that people had that were afraid. We're going to give it to you instead. And so wicked and slothful is the person who doesn't go out there and take that risk and multiply. So I wrote these down. It's like, I looked at the key things of why we even created the King's Brotherhood. Because like I'm preaching this message, become a four-dimensional businessman. You can go do it. But what we found that works so well is, is uh, an advisor flywheel, number one. 
there's so many different facets of life, right? There's fatherhood, there's spiritual growth, there's business growth, there's Facebook ads, there's sales, there's little nuances of these areas. And if you look at some of these areas in business, some of them can be outsourced, right? You should know what's going on in your marketing, but you can hire a marketing director. And this is what I'm saying. These are the areas in a man's life and a person's life that you cannot outsource. You can outsource marketing. You could actually get someone to sell for you. No big deal. But these core four areas physically can't outsource as a man. So an advisor flywheels, you may have a mentor. And when you bring up Facebook ads or even mentorship, they may know nothing about it. So their ability to advise you, right? It's like, this is why it says in Proverbs that many advisors, many advisors, many advisors, you prosper in, a, in, a, in an environment of many advisors. Why? Because one advisor may be good at one area or multiple areas, but not every area. And so inside of King's Brotherhood, what I created is an ability that I bring in 26 advisors throughout the year, not including our in-person events, where we'll have three to six advisors come in and speak into these men's businesses, life, spiritual growth, fatherhood, parenting, businesses, investing, specifically for each one of those areas. 26 experts over the entire year speaking in and becoming this advisor flywheel, which you can go out there and create through investing in mentors, building great relationships, or I just created an environment where men could get access to that by transferring money and going, here's the money, I'll take the advisors because it's way less. I, I invest like 300K just to build the network where people now can just invest and have access to the things that I fought for. The second thing was brothers. This is so important because it's required that osmosis, the easiest way to transform is to get inside of an environment of people that are operating at a high level, but are running at the same speed. That's because you don't talk to advisors every single day. So you want to surround yourself with people that are running after similar things, not just in morals and ethics. Why we surround ourselves with four dimensional businessmen, because we want to be more spiritually fit than we've ever been before, physically fit, better fathers and husbands, and as well as going after business at a greater measure. Yet when we are around those people, it says bad company corrupts good character. And so when you're around good company, what does that do? It amplifies your good character. Good character is what's required, required to carry out your mission in life, not just the equipping to be talented. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. The called are the people that are walking in, in integrity, that have great character through the power of the Holy Spirit and all glory to him as well inside of that. And so getting around brothers, and this is why I created the brotherhood. It's like you could even go to the King's Brotherhood on Facebook right now and immerse yourself around 5,600 guys that are all Christian businessmen. At least get around the free stuff. Like this stuff's all free. This podcast is all free. This show's all free. We invest a lot of money to put out a ton of free stuff for you so that if you want to go do it on your own, you can go do it on your own. Go build your brotherhood. And the next one is really around a plan. And this is called the GPS system. A lot of guys go out there in life and they want to go from San Diego to New York. That's their goal. They jump in the car and they just haul butt. They're just like going as fast as they can. They get stuck in this cul-de-sac. They don't know where to turn left, where to turn right. And they wander around just like the Israelites did in the desert. And this is one of the worst ways to go about life is walking around aimlessly with no real direction. And so what we want to find is if we can figure out your end destination of what you've been called to do, we can now look backwards with many advisors, with many brothers, with many game plans, and look at what is the core way that we can just plug it in the GPS. I want to go to New York. What's the best way to get there? Boom, there's the route. It's going to show you exactly how to avoid any of the things that you don't want to hit. You're not going to get stuck down a cul-de-sac. You're not going to get stuck on a side road, a dead end, et cetera, so that you can actually accomplish your destiny. But it takes figuring out what you want. And so putting that GPS system in is why we work with guys over a year and, and many years is taking that GPS system, plugging it in, and then building the infrastructure around that. Now, when it comes to each one of the four dimensions, I had talked a little bit earlier about what should the plan be? And one of them is, what do you want? And I, I always think this is interesting because if I were to ask guys, what do they want without telling them what it takes to get there or addressing their why? If I were to say, do you want to be a pro athlete? Many guys would be like, sure. Yeah, of course. And if I were to say, okay, great. 
If you work 18 hours a day following exactly what I say, you have a 0.0001% chance that you'll be a pro athlete, but you got to do it for like 10 years. They'd be like, bro, I'm, there's no way I'm going to do that. That's not good enough odds. And I'm like, well, then stop expecting that without understanding the process to get there. Same with fitness. A lot of guys, do you want to look like this bodybuilder? Yes. Great. Work out two hours a day, every day, no cheat meals, eat this way. And maybe in two years, you'll look a fraction of that. People will be like, bro, I don't, I don't want to do that. I, I want to work out like 30 minutes a day. It's like, okay, great. Well, then your goal, you don't have a big enough reason to go after that goal to put in the work every single day. So let's really align what you want with why you want it. And so when we really audit in your spiritual growth and your physical growth and your family growth and your business growth, what do you want and why do you want it? Until both of those things align so that we can figure out what does it take to get there. And when you can have a big enough why to do the things that you're meant to do, now all of a sudden those things are all intertwine in a way where they're bulletproof. So then all we have to do from there is figure out, okay, what is the plan that's required to get there? That's where it's very inexpensive. I always ask people, what's what costs more, ignorance or education? What costs more, ignorance or education? And many people at the end of the day go, ignorance costs way more than education does. Because as I fail, I'm losing money. I have opportunity costs. I'm doing things the wrong way. If I just had education, where are you at and where you want to be is the exact same of what you know and what you don't know yet. That's the only bridge. You just don't know yet. You don't know how to do it. And so if we can figure out a plan, like for me with fitness, I have a health goal. And so instead of being like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym every day and be like, I want to lose 60 pounds, right? Because I lost 60 pounds. It took me doing actions, but rather than me doing random actions, the whole San Diego to New York with no GPS, I'm like, I want to lose 60 pounds. I have a big enough why. I'm willing to put in this type of effort. Where's an expert that knows a plan that fits with me that I could do? And then an expert can give me a plan. And now all I have to do is focus on the plan. So one of the things that inside of becoming a four-dimensional businessman is we want to have a goal, a why an outcome that we want to create, whether you want to be a millionaire, a multimillionaire, billionaire, et cetera. Yet if we, that's all we're fixated on, we'll always be unhappy until we hit that. So what we want to do is we want to take that as the goal, million dollars by the end of the year, million dollars by the end of the year, you would know that you have to make 3000 or $2,900 a day, whatever that is. So now we can go, okay, I can chunk that down into quarterly goals. I can chunk that down into monthly goals. I can ch chunk that down into daily goals where I know I need to do 3,000 bucks a day, let's say. 3,000 bucks a day is what we need to do. I could chunk that down into products. I could figure out what actions are required to sell one of those products or however many products are required for $3,000 per day. And then I could just focus down on the actions. All right, well, this is the actions that it takes to produce this type of money. We're going to focus down on the actions. Now, all of a sudden, you can be pumped every day that you do the actions and check in on your progress every two weeks or every month with an advisor that knows how to get there to audit. Are the actions that we're doing getting us towards our goal or do we need to shift our game plan that we have? Now, all of a sudden, you're focused on the actions, not just the outcomes, because it's ultimately at the end of the day, the actions that produce outcomes. If you walk, if you work out and follow the plan, it doesn't matter how much you want to be fit. You will be fit. You don't go to the gym and go, oh, I want to be fit. No, you do that to set the goal and commit to the plan. And then you just follow the plan and you celebrate every single day that you just do your daily habits and activities. This is what we call a four-dimensional businessman. This is why we created the King's Brotherhood. We actually have events all over the United States with our King's Brotherhood elite, where we have these retreats that kind of kickstart you into what we call a four-dimensional businessman, getting you around the mini advisors, the, the advisor flywheel, getting you inside of brotherhood where you build brothers for a lifetime, where it's good company that creates good character inside of your life that are like-minded in business and in faith. Right. Many times we go after faith and we realize no one understands what we're going through in business. Inside of the business world, we realize we're not growing in faith. And when that happens enough, we realize that both of those things just don't fit together. And we, for the first time, have created that inside of King's Brotherhood and with 
God's business. And you can actually go to apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com slash event, apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com slash event to see the next event that we have coming up. There's a quick application there so that we get to know more about you and make sure that we can serve you. If we can't, don't worry, we won't, we won't do anything. We won't have you get pitched on anything. If we can, then you'll be the happiest guy ever because you're like, this is more valuable than whatever it takes to invest to get there. We have end of event money back guarantees. Like we guarantee every single thing that we do. Yet also take this and run with it as a four-dimensional businessman growing in faith, health, relationships, and business because this is the only true way that you will be successful as a man. Put them in that order or else you'll be juggling spinning plates for your entire life, chasing a tail as you become less fit, more rich, you lose money every time you get fit and you're always going up and down, losing the relationship. And it's always this constant battle. No, you can be bulletproof by being four-dimensional inside of your life. If this was valuable to you and you want more solo episodes, let me know down in the comments. You're going to want to go over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when we drop new episodes. Also, it means the world to us. If you go to whatever podcast platform that you love the most, hit that subscribe button. Yet there is a way to live, leave a rate and review that we all read that gives us fuel for producing content just like this. Thank you for tuning in to God's business. Let's go become four-dimensional together.